The question of do fathers matter has been around for quite some time and can be heard by the likes of lay people as well as those in the realm of academia alike. In considering that according to the U.S. Census Bureau's 2009 statistics, every one in three children live in a father's home, it does seem that asking this is warranted. It's a rather broad question, and even looking to my bookshelf now, I can see a book titled just this by Paul Rayburn, yet another book that has been collecting dust for some time. I'll get to it eventually. In this video, we'll go over hypotheses, theories, and of course, findings that researchers have brought to light over multiple decades, starting from the 80s, on the subject of how father absence has been found to play a significant role in the trajectory of the puberty and furthermore, mating style of daughters. If you were to do a cursory search for research on this relationship, it is more than likely that somewhere in these studies, a seminal 1982 piece by Draper and Harpending, titled Father Absence and Reproductive Strategy, and evolutionary perspective would be referenced as a building block for the researchers' hypotheses. As a quick refresh, this was a study I brought up in the last video which stated that, quote, in general, father absent girls show precocious sexual interests, derogation of masculinity in males, and poor ability to maintain sexual and emotional adjustment with one male, end quote. What the two authors proposed was the potential for father absent daughters' perceptions of a need for paternal investment to be that of not necessary. Furthermore, this living arrangement would lead to a precocious sexual debut, unstable pair bonding as well as vetting during the mate selection process, essentially a short-term mating strategy, and this adaptation would be contingent on whether the father was present in the home during childhood or not. An evolutionary component can be found in explanations by researchers, and there appear to be a consensus established amongst evolutionary and non-evolutionary researchers alike. Jumping from 1982 to 1991, almost a decade later, Belsky and others established what is referred to as psychosocial acceleration theory. This theory follows from and expands on Draper and Harpening's work while placing a great deal of emphasis on childhood stress. As explained in one meta-analysis, quote, a stressful childhood environment and insecure attachment to parents, or both, can lead to earlier pubertal maturation and, subsequently, to increase adult sexual promiscuity, unstable pair bonds, and decrease investment in offspring, end quote. There's no shortage of factors that could contribute to the stress load of children, such as divorce, poverty, and even the death of a parent. Furthermore, it may be that as a consequence of these stress factors, not to mention the accompanying mode of engagement by parents with children under these stressful circumstances, such as neglect, trust may not be established within the family unit. Paralleling with the previous study, these stress factors will play a role in factors such as early menarche, sexual debut, and a short-term mating strategy. Now, while there are plenty of corroborating research findings adding credibility to these associations, as with most subjects, it is not universally the case. For instance, while father absence was found to be associated with early breast development in Africa, in the case of American cousins, wherein one has a father figure present and one doesn't, no significant association between this and sexual debut or onset of menarche was found. We'll get more into these conflicting research findings later, and that's where things get weird. I recall years ago listening to Stefan Molyneux touch on the subject of the relationship between father absence and what it means for daughters. One point that stuck out to me was his stating that when fathers in the past were absent, they were likely to be in war. This very well would have been relevant in some cases and does parallel with our next model by Chisholm from 1993. While still placing emphasis on stress throughout childhood as with Belsky's work, factors such as father absence are said to be perceived of as mortality risk. This perception, following from previous research, would result in early menarche, sexual debut, and a short-term mating strategy. Skipping ahead eight years to 2001, we are brought to a novel hypothesis by Kanazawa, which places emphasis on societal rates of polygyny in relation to early menarche. What he proposes is that father absent daughters are more inclined to pair with cads as opposed to dads, and this is contingent upon a given society's prevalent form of marriage, i.e. polygynous or monogamous. 
In the case of polygynous marriages, wherein one man follows the children of multiple women, his time with said children is spread thin, thus bringing about a form of absence. Alternatively, in the case of a society that is predominantly monogamous, serial polygyny, in the form of successively producing offspring with younger wives following divorce, is still an option. This, once again, would result in a form of absence. Polygyny here would cause two things, the absence of fathers as well as a dearth of women to reproduce with. Here it is thought that, while it is not advantageous for daughters to reach puberty earlier in a monogamous society, due to all men with adequate resources being paired already, this, however, is a benefit in the polygynous one, wherein successive mating is common practice. By this framework, Kanazawa asserts that, as polygyny in all societies increases, a decrease in age of onset of menarche should be found. Moreover, that as society's divorce rate increases as well, once again resulting in father absence, this effect should also be found. In his analysis of data from 78 countries, he found just this. In those which were more polygynous, there was a lower mean age of menarche. In addition to this finding, interestingly, this mean age has actually been decreasing, meaning that women in many countries are reaching puberty earlier. Now while there does appear to be some credibility to these findings, things are surely bound to become a bit difficult when attempting to use the word all when asserting the applicability of a hypothesis as Kanazawa has here. Not all researchers have bought into this consensus regarding the relationship between father absence and menarche, and there are also multiple ways to interpret all of this. For instance, Flynn's 1988 research found that daughters living with their fathers in Dominica did not face early sexual debut. This would appear to follow the findings discussed thus far, however, this was ultimately attributed to acts of guarding by fathers. As I previously mentioned, this is where things get weird, or W-E-I-R-D, which is an acronym for Western, Educated, Industrialized, Rich, and Democratic. As Sear, Shepard, and Cole emphasize in this tellingly titled 2019 study, while associations have been found between factors such as father absence and menarche in daughters, this is not invariably the case across the globe. One significant contributing factor to this they found was that authors predominantly utilize weird data sets. For instance, two of the authors in their own studies found results disagreeing with the prevailing consensus. Quote, In Malaysia, paternal death is associated with delayed puberty, divorce with accelerated puberty. In the U.S. Kinsey survey, death is associated with accelerated and divorce delayed puberty. End quote. Even more telling, as we can see in the first chart, while weird girls were found to commonly face accelerated puberty in relation to father absence, this was not necessarily the case for non-Western ones. Notably, however, as is stated in the description, this is regardless of statistical significance. Now in the case of the second chart, while this association is still more common in weird girls, there is also a significant amount of data pointing to it not being significant. So where does this leave us? Well, it does appear that there is significantly more data on weird girls, and this perhaps contributes to this outcome. In the case of how prevalent this relationship between father absence is to menarche, well, only further research will shed light on this.